Okay, guys. Good morning. Uh, today we're going to continue with Chapter Five. We're going to talk about Section Four Dash Five. Chapter Four. I'm sorry. Section Four Dash Five. We're going to be talking about writing linear functions. Okay, function rules in general. Now, I, we have already learned how to write equations in the past. This is just more of the same skill. We're going to be writing equations now that have independent and dependent variables. Many real-world functional relationships can be represented by equations. You can use these equations to find solutions to real-world problems. For example, stock market figures, that comes from equations. The price that they give to a car, that came from an equation. Um, the, 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 the area of a figure or, or um, a building, that comes from areas, uh, that comes from from formulas, from equations, from functions. Okay, equations are what allow us to manipulate data and to find values for missing data. So it's a very important skill. Let's just verbally review some of key words for operation signs. For example, to add, okay, add, we have words such as some, more, more than, add, added to, in addition to, increase by, okay, all those are addition. Subtraction, we got difference, less, less than. Remember, when you see less than, you switch the first for the last. Okay, so for example, if I said x less 5, that would just be x minus 5. If I said x less than 5, then you switch, it'd be 5 minus x. Uh, multiplication of product times multiply, multiply by, per, depending on how they use it. Division, quotient, uh, divided by, divided into, per as well, depending on how they use it. So all of those words we have already learned way back in chapter one. So I hope that you remember those. If not, I suggest strongly that you go back and memorize them. Now, let's go ahead. Today we're just going to write equations. That's all we're going to do. You can estimate the temperature by counting the number of chirps of the snowy cricket. These are true, just true statements. The outdoor temperature is about 40 degrees Fahrenheit, more than one-fourth the number of chirps the cricket makes in one minute. What is a function rule that represents this situation? First thing you're always going to do, my friends, is determine the independent and the dependent variables. Once you can determine the independent and dependent variables, in my opinion, it just goes so much, so much more smoothly. So what is the independent and dependent variable here? Sir, independent is not the temperature, not in this particular case. Because think about what you can say, guys. Think about what they're saying. You can estimate the temperature by counting the number of chirps. So what would the independent variable be? The number of chirps per minute. Very good. Number of chirps per minute. It could have been temperature. It could have, but they would have had to have worded differently. And then I'm going to choose a, a, a variable letter. What letter do you guys want to use? Okay, C. Perfect. So that's my independent C, and that star stands for the number of chirps per minute. What is my dependent variable? Very good, son. The temperature. So the temperature and I'm going to say that the temperature, we're going to call it capital T. Now that we have the independent and the dependent, it makes things a lot easier. Because now the dependent variable T, okay, the temperature, okay, the temperature is, what does this mean? About 40 more than? 40 plus, good job. One-fourth the number of chirps. Per minute. One fourth C. Fantastic.
fantastic. Great job, guys. Absolutely fantastic. Now, we're not asking to graph these at this point. We're going to have a whole chapter, next chapter, on graphing, and that's all we're going to do. For this particular section, I'm not really going to ask you to graph this, okay? I just want you to write the equation. Now, just for giggles, if you wanted to graph this, you just make yourself a little table. Now, I have a one-fourth in front of the C, so what values am I going to use? I'm sorry? Zero. Zero chirps. Four chirps. You can't have negative chirps. Thank you. You're thinking, though, but you can't have negative chirps. But you can have eight and then 12 and then 16, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I don't have to use some multiples of the denominator, but when I use multiples of the denominator, it makes it so much easier to graph. Because when it's zero chirps, it's 40 degrees outside. Four chirps, it's 41 degrees. Eight chirps, it's 42 degrees. 12 chirps, it's 43 degrees. 16 chirps, it's 44 degrees, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then from here, if you needed to, you could graph those points. Sir, this is con uh, Yes, this would not be continuous. Good job. Because you can't have half a chirp. Very good question, son. Thank you. Good man. Good man. May I continue, gentlemen? Okay. A landfill has 50,000 tons of waste in it. Each month, it accumulates an average of 420 more tons of waste. What is a function rule that represents the total number of waste after M months? First things first, what's independent, what's dependent? Yes, sir, my brother. Very good. Time is always independent. Great job, son. So independent is the number of months. And they told us what to represent it as this little m. What's the dependent, my brother? Keep going. You're, you're on a roll. The, the, there it is. Thank you. The tons of waste. Very good. What would you like to call the tons of waste? How do you want to represent it? Okay, he wants a w. Perfect. I could have chosen anything I want. As long as I write it down, it doesn't matter. Now, now, we know the dependent, right? This is why I like to choose the independent dependent first, because doesn't the dependent always equal what's going on? So the waste equals... Come on, guys, you do it. What is it? There's no 240, Papa. No, it won't be times. Oh, actually, yes, yes, it will be times, yes. It'll be 420 times every month plus the 50,000 that it already has. Right? Why would this be important? Let's say that you own a landfill company, okay? And your company can only hold, let's say, a million tons. And you know that it's going at this rate. From here, you could calculate how many more months you can stay in business. That's the equation. That's the equation. For example, if you know that the total waste, just to make life easy, was, let's just say, 100,000. Okay? How many months can you be in business? Well, you're going to subtract 50,000 of both sides and then divide it by 420. And that would be the number of months that you can have. Does that make sense, guys? That's the point of equations. It's not just for, for a teacher to give you a hard time. No. It's because this is what they use in real life. If they didn't have that, then one day they would go ahead and dump waste in there, and it would start overflowing onto the non-wasteland. And then you have fines, and may may shut you down, and you have to pay a government fee, you know, penalties. So you need formulas to know what's going on. Okay, this is a good one. Hopefully, hopefully it's a great one since you guys go to concerts and stuff. Okay, a concert seating plan is shown below. Let me explain the seating plan before we go any further. It says here that the bottom, close to the stage, that's the reserve seating. 
at 25 bucks a seat, and there's 10 rows and 12 seats per row. So how many total seats in the reserve seating? 120, good. The general seating is $10 a ticket, 30 rows times 16 seats per row. So how many total available seats are there? 480, very good. Okay, now, um, uh, okay, the reserved seating, they say here, is sold out, okay? They sold it out. Total revenue from ticket sales will depend on the number of general seating tickets sold. Write a function rule to represent this situation. Okay, like always, my brothers, what is the independent and what is the dependent? Sir? No. The independent, guys, is the number of general seats. Guys, I think read doesn't this say total revenue depends on so wouldn't total revenue be the dependent so total revenue I'm gonna call our general seats I'm gonna call little G does everyone see what I did there gentlemen okay so my total revenue R pay attention it's gonna equal didn't they say that reserve seatings was sold out? So how much money did I make from there? 300, right? 25 times 10 times 12. Is it 300? Wait, no. I don't think that math is wrong. Wait, let me see. 12 times 10 times 25. 3,000. That's what I thought. Okay. Three thousand. So you made three thousand dollars from your sold out reserve seating. Plus isn't it ten dollars for every seat G in general seating? Does everyone see that? Talk to me, my friends. Okay, now that's part one. Represent the function. Now part two. What is the maximum possible revenue they can have? Think, read. What is the maximum? Guys, what do you mean, what do I mean? What I mean is, what is the maximum revenue they can make? Okay, yes, thank you very much, guys. Check out what they did, guys. This is the function where G is the number of seats, correct? Wouldn't they make the max possible, guys, if they sold out all of these seats? Hello? How many total seats are there in the general seating? So why can't I go plus 10 times 480, which is then going to be $7,800 is the total revenue. Guys, please talk to me because this is going to be your homework. This is your quiz. And this is going to be the majority of your test. This is the important part of this chapter. So if you got stuck there, please let me know why. And I will happily help you. You guys have got to read. Okay? Reading is a very, very important thing in math. And again, how did I know that? Because they asked for the max possible. If it's the max possible, doesn't that mean that everything was sold? What are the max number of seats you can sell in the general seating area? 480. 480 times 10, that's the max you can make. Plus the sold out reserved of seven, uh, of 3,000, we got 7,800. Does that make sense, gentlemen? Okay. <coughs> A kennel charges $15 per day to board dogs. Upon arrival, each dog must have a flea bath that costs $12. What it, what Write a function rule for the total cost of N days of boarding plus a bath. And then, second question, how much does a 10-day cost? And then, does a 5-day cost half as much as a 10-day? So, okay. So, first thing, we're going to write the function. What is my independent variable and my dependent variable? Sir. D 
dependent is total cost. Yes. What do you want to call total cost, buddy? Okay, he wants to call it C. Awesome. What about the independent? Thank you very good, very much. The number of days. What would you like to call the number of days, son? Okay, D. Perfect. Now, pay attention, please, guys. The total cost, okay, cost is $15 per day plus, don't they have to take a bath? Does that make sense? So that's that's step one. Okay, that's that part's done. Now part two. How much does it cost for ten days? Well, you plug in ten for D. It's gonna be easy. That's one fifty plus twelve, so that's a hundred and sixty-two dollars. Now, step three. Do you think if I go five days, it's gonna be half as much? Wrong. It will not be half as much. And I'll tell you why. Because don't you still have to pay the 12 no matter what? So it won't be half. It's going to be the cost will equal 15 times 5 days plus 12. 15 times 5 is 75 plus 8 is uh, 75 plus, uh, come on, moral. What did you just do here? 87, sorry. So, yeah, it's not half. So, no. And, again, why was it not half? Because of the 12. Does everyone understand how I did this? Again, I'm going to repeat myself. This is all you're doing for the homework. The whole homework is writing equations. The quiz will be writing equations. And this will be a large part of your test and midterm. So does anyone have any questions, please? Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Let's continue. You're very welcome, son. All right, write a function rule for the area of a rectangle whose length is five feet more than its width. What is the what happened? What is the area of a rectangle when the width is nine? Okay, well first of all, a couple things we gotta remember. Area of a rectangle is uh, length times width or depending on what they give you could be base times height. Okay? Now in this particular case, they already gave us a function. Area depends on the length and the width. However, we don't know what the length and the width are, so like I've taught you at least 20 times, you make a table when you've got two different, two different uh, variables that you're dealing with here. It says that the length is 5 feet more than its width. So what do we know absolutely nothing about? The width. What do we call something we know absolutely nothing about? Very good. What do we know about the length, gentlemen? It's five feet more, it's five feet more than the width. How do we represent that? That's what I'm talking about. Now, very simple. Area equals length times width. Right? Now, how would I write that the correct way? Come on. Who said that? Perfect. Say it out loud and proud. Distributive property. Thank you, son. You just made me very proud. So that's x squared plus 5x. That's my function. Now, part two, it asks, what is the area of the rectangle when the width is 9? Okay, well, let's think about it. If the width equals 9, what is the length? 14 because of this right here. So area would equal 14 times 9, which is going to be 126 square feet. Remember that perimeter is linear. That's just feet or centimeters or inches. Area is squared. you have a question, sir? Are you sure? Does that make sense, gentlemen? All right, perfect. That's my lesson, boys. Homework is valid. Thank you very much, and God bless you.